Hey Forrest, I just got the ECU in and I got everything all wired up and I think I'm ready to let this thing sing. Yeah, I see you must have really liked it because you installed that big Link ECU sticker there. Well, I was hoping if I put a big sticker on the car, it might help you get me some louder pops and bangs. Well, all right, maybe we'll get to that later, but first I'm gonna help you and the people out there watching know 10 things they need to do before getting their Link ECU started. <laughs> Step number one, you're going to need to go to linkecu.com and download the version of PC Link that suits your ECU. So if you have a G4X ECU, you can use either G4X or G5 software. If you have a G4 Plus, you could use G4 Plus software. Hey Forrest, the dealer made me get the serial number off the box here and then gave me this paper that has an unlock code with a bunch of letters and numbers on it. So don't lose it. Yeah, this is actually really important and that brings me to step two. Every ECU is going to need an unlock code before it's enabled. The ECUs are shipped disabled in case of theft during shipping. So until you receive this unlock code from your dealer, you won't be able to use the ECU. You can get that unlock code by sending your dealer the serial number, which will be found on the box, or you can get that serial number by connecting to the ECU via PC link. All right, well now I got the unlock code, I got the software downloaded, how do I connect to this thing? All right, it's very simple. You're just gonna plug into the ECU using the USB cable that came in the box. Step four, you're gonna to wanna to go over the IO that you're setting up for the ECU. Each ECU is gonna come with this quick start guide and inside you'll find a IO list and also your ECU pinout. Forrest, what's up? I got my quick start guide for all the IO filled out for my wiring harness. Can we put it in the computer now and make some pops and bangs? Yeah, come on, I'll show you. Okay, so we've got our extreme base map open. And since it is a wiring ECU, it's not set up for any particular engine or vehicle right out of the box. So we're gonna have to go through and set all of our IO to match what we wired the engine harness to. So first off, we'll start with our ECT. That's gonna be our engine coolant temperature. And we have that on A and temp one. After we select the source, we also have to select the calibration. So we'll go here and we are using the Honda K20 sensor. So we'll click there and we're good to go for our ECT. Next up, let's go to the map sensor. Same thing, we'll have to select our source. It's gonna be A and volt one for this one. And then we'll have to select the calibration. On this one, we're gonna be using the link four bar. So we'll go here and we'll select link four bar. And that's kind of a basic so that I'm not going to bore you guys with going through all of them, but you get the point. You have to select the input and also the calibration for the sensors. All right. Well, now that we got all the wire pins assigned for the inputs and outputs that I have. Can we fire this thing up yet? Well, not yet. That brings us to point number five. We're going to need to verify our trigger settings. What's trigger settings? We'll get right into that. All right. So let's jump into getting our trigger set up. It's a very important part to getting the engine started because if the ECU doesn't know the engine's position, it doesn't know when to fire the coils or injectors. So first, we'll have to select our trigger mode. We have a few options here. Right now it's set on multi-tooth because that's just what the map was out of the box. But you also have multi-tooth missing. And then we have a bunch of pre-configured setups. So since this one is a Honda K24, we happen to have a preset for that so we'll go through here and we'll select Honda K24 VTC and everything's all set and ready to go. All right well now that the triggers are set up please tell me we can fire this thing up. Listen bud I know you're triggered but we still got to do a few more things. We got to check our fuel injection outputs and our ignition outputs. Then we can fire it up. We'll get to it. All right so next up we need to get our fuel injectors and our coils all set up. So first off, we're going to have to select our injection mode. Uh, for this one, we're gonna do sequential, but this is where you would also 
decide if you're going to do uh, staged or anything like that. So we're going to do sequential here. Also, you're going to need to make a choice here on whether you want to use a traditional or modeled uh, fuel equation mode. And then we also have the modeled multi-fuel, which would, you would use for things like flex fuel. So for this one, I'm going to choose modeled. Uh, one thing to uh, note here is if you were on traditional, you would not choose a injector size here, but you would have to adjust your master fuel setting. So with modeled, it's going to ask you for a lot more things. It's going to ask you your engine capacity, your uh, fuel system type, the type of fuel that you're running, the stoic ratio of that fuel, uh, a lot more information that you'll have to have to run it in modeled. Um, so like I said, all this information is important. So for this one, we're running a 2.4 liter, so we'll do 2400 cc. Now, next up, we need to select the right number of cylinders for the engine that we have on here. So this is a four cylinder engine, so we need to change this to four. And then we also need to get our um, firing order correct. So this engine will definitely not have a one, two, three, four firing order. So we'll go in here and we will select our firing order. Next down the line, now we have to put in our information for our injectors. So in this one, we're running a 2200 cc injector. And then we would also need to put in our injection injector dead time um, and also the short pulse width adder table. If you have that information, it's definitely a good thing to fill out. Uh, sometimes you don't have that information, so you have to do without it. Next, we have our ignition coils for this. That's a set our ignition mode for this one. We'll do direct spark. Spark edge most commonly is going to be falling, but in some cases it will be rising. Just depends on the hardware on the vehicle. And then you have your dwell control table and you'll need to fill that out to suit the coils that are on the vehicle. And that's pretty much the basics of injector and coil settings without going too far into it. All right, so now we got the fuel injectors and the coil set up. There's got to be something else probably before we got to fire this thing up, huh? Yeah, so we definitely want to go over all of the other inputs and outputs. So that's any switches or things we're controlling like fans and fuel pumps and things like that. And just make sure they work before we start trying to start the car? Exactly. Okay, let's do it. All right, let's test the fans. All right, Forrest, turn them on. Woo, baby, they're working. All right, now let's make sure that boost solenoid noise works. Oh yeah, she's vibrating like a buggy down a dirt road. All right, next up, let's uh, get that coal number one checked out. Coil number one's firing for us. Okay, now we're gonna get into our injector output test. Uh, one thing that's important to note is that you probably want to have your fuel pump off um, for this test. So if you have the fuel pump on a switch or if it's constantly on with ignition on, you may want to pull the fuse while you're doing this test. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your injector test menu. If you don't already have it open on the page, you just go to ECU settings and then you'll search for injector and you will see the injector test menu. And then from there, it's pretty easy. You're just gonna go to injector test and then you will choose which cylinder you would like to test. And while you're checking each one, you make sure that the correct injector is actually firing. So this way you can verify your wiring to know that 
injector one is actually in the position of injector one and so on. For the eighth step, right now, it would be a good idea to check to make sure that your fuel system is functioning properly. If you have one of our linked fuel pressure sensors, you can easily do that by checking fuel pressure in PC link. For step number nine, you're gonna need a timing light because you're gonna need to calibrate your trigger offset. Before we get started, it's important to note that all of this is based off of having a accurate mark on your crank pulley and also timing pointer set up on your engine. If you don't have those two things set up properly, all of this is gonna be based off of an incorrect value. So we would go to the calibrate menu and click on the wrench icon where it says set base timing. Now here you're gonna have three values. The first value is what we're actually going to lock the ignition timing to. So we'd want to set this to a value that we have a marking on our crank pulley for. So if we only have a TDC mark, we would select zero. But in some cases, you may have marks for 5, 10, 15, 20, or any number of things. And you can line it up to those numbers as long as you set this lock ignition timing value to the same. Next, you have your adjustment value. So this is how you're going to adjust the trigger offset to match up with what you're seeing on the crank pulley. So for example, if we're looking for zero degrees and we see five or 10, then we would adjust this amount by that difference in order to get things to line up. And then next we have the delay. So this is a value that you would adjust by revving the engine to a higher RPM. And if you see that the ignition timing is not staying at your locked value when it's at higher RPM, then you'll need to make some adjustments here to the delay. And that's pretty much it for the basics there. Forrest, you ready for me to fire this thing up? Yeah, everything looks good here. Let's start it up. All right. If you need more information, you can always check our website, linkecu.com, and also the help file and PC link. Also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay notified for when we release the next video. Thanks for watching.